Hey guys, Ruben Lara here, and today I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to get a true 3D cube into Clip Studio. Now, most of the time, I'm just roughing out these 3D cubes to start off a, a concept or a rough sketch, and this is going to work for most applications. But if you're new to roughing out cubes and you just need a little help with the grid, or if you're experienced at roughing out cubes and you just need to move your drawing to a more finished uh, stage using a true grid, this is really going to be helpful. In fact, now that I'm looking at my drawing, I can already see some mistakes in my vanishing points. All right, so I'm just gonna clear this layer here real quick. And what we wanna do is go up to the window, Material, Material 3D, and that's gonna open our 3D material palette. It should come with a series of basic primitive, uh, primitive shapes here already. So all we're gonna do is drag this cube and drag it right onto our document. We can hide that window by going to Window, Material, and unchecking that uh, particular palette. Now it may leave a bunch of open palettes for you there, but you can just close those to clean it up. All right, so in our layers palette, we now have another layer with this 3D cube. Now what we want to do is find the object selection tool. So it's different than the normal move tool. It looks like a little box with an arrow on it. And if you open your subtool operation palette, you see that it's inside a folder called operation. So if you've been fussing with your palettes here in Clip Studio, this may be on another tool here, so if you don't see that, make sure you find the operation palette and let's select the object tool. And what that allows us to do now is to select our 3D object. So when it's not selected, I'll just undo that real quick. Uh, when we have our move tool selected, we can't access the 3D object, but when we have the object tool selected, all of a sudden we get this little manipulation menu is what Clip Studio calls it. We're gonna focus on the first three icons here. These are the camera movement icons. And as soon as we tumble using the first one, we can see that now we're working in a true 3D space. So the first one is tumble, the second one is pan, and the third one is gonna dolly or zoom in and out of our scene. So just play around with that for a little bit and we can center up our object just like that. We also have this little camera icon at the bottom that appears and this helps us to find some preset angles, uh, which makes it really easy to just, you know, kind of find a, a nice three quarter angle there. So I'm just gonna use something that looks uh, maybe like, uh, like this. I'll just move that up in the scene a little bit. And this is perfect. Now I wanna use this cube as the basis for my perspective grid. How can I do that? Well, the first thing we wanna do is expose this cube's perspective grid to the rest of the document. Because if we make a new layer and start drawing on that layer, we can see that we're not really drawing in that, uh, in that perspective space. I'll just undo that. So if you select the layer that contains your 3D object and come up here to this little folder, we're gonna click show in all layers. So that exposes this layer's grid system to the rest of the document. Now, if I click on the first layer and try to draw, automatically we're gonna be drawing in the perspective based of the grid of that particular layer that's showing. So that's really, really handy. Now, a couple of things to note, if you're not immediately drawing in perspective, head on up to the view menu and make sure that snap to special ruler is turned on. Also make sure that snap to grid is turned off. So this is the setting that we want for our snapping. All right, the other thing we can do is kind of get rid of our cube by selecting the layer and turning down the opacity. If we turn down the opacity, we can still keep the perspective grid exposed and continue drawing in perspective. Now let's say we don't want to draw in perspective anymore and we just want to draw freehand. There's a couple ways to do that. We can turn off the layer that contains the perspective grid and now we're drawing freehand again. As soon as we turn that on, we're snapping to the ruler. Now sometimes you want to draw freehand but you want to leave the perspective grid on. How can we do that? Well, we have a little icon up here that's going to toggle our snap to special ruler. That's the same thing as going to the view menu and turning this on and off. So it's just an easy way to do it. So if I toggle that off, now I'm drawing freehand and now I'm drawing in perspective. So it's a real quick way of uh, just toggling that on and off. Now, if you really wanna get fast at this, we can use our edge keyboard to set a hotkey for this. If you don't see your edge keyboard and you don't see this uh, little icon that I have here floating in the corner, go up to your Clip Studio preferences and then come over to interface and turn the edge keyboard option to button. That's gonna give you this little button that you can place on any one of the corners and you just tap it and your edge keyboard shows up. 
Edge keyboard is super helpful for tons of stuff. So let's set one of these function keys to this uh, toggle special ruler snap. We'll come up here to shortcut settings. We just need to find that command in the menu commands category. So make sure you're on menu commands. Again, we're going up to view. Let's find a snap to special ruler. And there it is. Right now it's set to ampersand, which is not helpful here on the iPad at least. I'm gonna edit that shortcut and I'll just click uh, any one of these function keys. Let's just say uh, T4. And now when I tap T4, you can see that that little snap icon is toggling on and off. Now remember, you can also set a keyboard shortcut for your desktop system. Mine is set to the tilde key on the left edge of my keyboard, and so it's real quick to turn that snapping on and off. So we can be drawing in perspective, toggle that, draw freehand, toggle that, and then draw in perspective again. And now we have a real easy way to just really lay out a space really quickly. Let's say I'm doing the interior of a room, and um, you know, I can just Keep on, keep on modifying from there. Again, toggling the freehand snap, tog toggling that back on to snap back to my special ruler. Now, if you're finding that the grid is just too strong for you to look at, you can also scale that back. So going up to the preferences uh, interface again, and if we come over here to the ruler unit section, we can reduce the opacity of all of our guidelines. I kind of like to work with it somewhere around like, I don't know, 30%. And that'll just kick everything way back. We can still see what's happening. Uh, let me toggle my perspective ruler on again. We can still see what's happening, but it's just not that in, in your face. All right, so there was an easy uh, way to use Clip Studio's 3D object tools, in particular the cube, to set a 3D perspective grid environment that will help us to quickly and accurately lay out dimensional spaces. All right, hope that was helpful. Best wishes on your project, and we'll see you next time.